Hello, friends. I wanted to um, do two readings today, one from Rousseau and one from Frederick Nietzsche. Make sure I pronounce that right. I saw a very interesting presentation on the cult of sincerity, Rousseau's cult of sincerity. And I thought some very interesting points. Um, and I find these two passages to be very sincere from both men. Um, mine is not a learned opinion or a particularly well-read opinion. Uh, it's just kind of a, um, I've read these several times, passages several times, but today, for some reason, they strike me differently. And I feel in my sharing of how these words and ideas affect me and make me feel, in some way I am revealing a deeper level of my own experience, which is usually something that we hold from one another and hide. Um, This idea of sincerity, Rousseau says, you know, replaces patriotism and wisdom. And he calls bullshit, <laughs> which I really like, on all of the high-minded thinking and talking and writing that was going on at the time. And saying, you know, really getting to know yourself and true self-realization. I really do resonate with his feeling that spending time alone with your own nature, with yourself, is the way to truly realize yourself in your own reflection. So it's a kind of total, you know, self-love in a way. But he's saying, you know, we need to be honest with what we are. We are selfish beings. And, but we, the more selfish we are, the more we need others, which is this paradox. Okay. This is book one of Rousseau's The Confessions. I have entered upon a performance, which is without example, whose accomplishment will have no imitator. I mean to present my fellow mortals with a man in all the integrity of nature, and this man shall be myself. I know my heart and have studied mankind. I am not made like anyone I have been acquainted with, perhaps like no one in existence. If not better, I at least claim originality. And whether nature did wisely in breaking the mold with which she formed me can only be determined after having read this work. Whenever the last trumpet shall sound, I will present myself before the sovereign judge with this book in my hand and loudly proclaim, thus have I acted. These were my thoughts. Such was I. With equal freedom and veracity have I related what was laudable or wicked. I have concealed no crimes, added no virtues, and if I have sometimes introduced superfluous ornament, it was merely to occupy a void occasioned by defect of memory. I may have supposed that certain, which I only knew to be probable, but have never asserted as truth, a conscious falsehood. Such as I was, I have declared myself, sometimes vile and despicable, at others virtuous, generous, and sublime, even as thou hast read my inmost soul, power eternal, assemble round thy throne an innumerable throng of my fellow mortals. Let them listen to my confessions. Let them blush at my depravity. Let them tremble at my sufferings. Let each in turn expose with equal sincerity the failings, the wanderings of his heart. And if he dare ever, I was better than that man. Bold claim. And now um, I'll read just one quote from Friedrich Nietzsche from On the Genealogy of Morals, Ecce Homo. This is one sincere dude and uh, driven, powerful, you know, vital, alive, you know, maybe a little too much, but sometimes, you know, for the world, but uh, 
he uh uh you know i guess i'm like every person that's come across him it's really digested him. you're like what is this you know all these aphorisms all these crazy you know this very intense dude but uh i feel sincere you know i i'm just he has this passion that i do i feel you know the fire stoked by his words um and i guess reflect in them and reflect see myself there you know we put ourselves in the center of every story right <laughs> um all right we don't know ourselves we knowledgeable people we are personally ignorant about ourselves and there's good reason for that we've never tried to find out who we are how could it ever happen that one day we discover our own selves with justice it's been said that where your treasure is there shall your heart be also our treasure lies where the beehives of our knowledge stand we are always busy with our knowledge as if we were born winged creatures collectors of intellectual honey in our hearts we are basically concerned with only one thing to bring something home as far as the rest of life is concerned what people call experience which of us is serious enough for that who has enough time and these matters i fear we've been missing the point our hearts have not even been engaged nor for that matter have our ears we've been much more like someone divinely distracted and self-absorbed into whose ear the clock has just peeled the 12 strokes of noon with all its force and all at once wakes up and asks himself what exactly did that clock strike so we rub ourselves behind the ears afterwards and ask totally surprised and embarrassed what have we really just experienced and more who are we really then as i've mentioned we count after the fact all the 12 trembling strokes of the clock of our experience our lives our being alas in the process we keep losing the count so we remain necessarily strangers to ourselves we do not understand ourselves we have to keep ourselves confused for us this law holds for all eternity each man is furthest from himself where we ourselves are concerned we are not knowledgeable people I want to answer that. I, I, I have raised an answer to him, partially, in speaking my heart, I guess. Not for attention or any kind of, uh, you know, desire to demonstrate my own understanding. I'm giving it, I'm answering Rousseau. I'm answering Nietzsche. 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 God, I would have liked to have talked to that guy. 